RGC Podcast. Hello, Rio Grande City, and welcome to the RGC Podcast. My name is Becky Rubio. And I'm Melinda Gomez. And we're joined by... Joel Villarreal, Mayor of the great city of Rio Grande City. Uh, it's awesome to have you here today, Mayor, and uh, thank you for coming by. We, we just want to uh, sit down with you and have a conversation and just, you know, have you tell us a little bit about yourself and let Rio Grande City know more about their mayor. Absolutely. Certainly look forward to, to this conversation, by all means, and uh, congratulations on, on starting this initiative, which I'm sure is going to be uh, a hit. No doubt. We hope. We <laughs> have no, no, it will be it a will. hit. It's it going to happen. Be. Yes. We're going to take it to unprecedented <laughs> levels like we've done everything else here at the city. Always looking for that bigger and better concept, right? Yeah, just <laughs> growing and growing. So um, one question that I would like to ask you is, how did you first get interested in public service? Back in uh, early 2000, actually, no, it's more like 2007, 2007 2008, started uh, with the planning and zoning, I was chair of the planning and zoning commission here in Rio Grande City, and also the uh, building standards and renewal board, uh, which we're looking at, of course, dilapidated buildings. And how do we start that, uh, in a sense, getting rid of some of these buildings or, or upholding more standards? Really, it comes down to that, because as a municipality, you need to have codes and uh, Prior to us becoming a city, of course, Rio Grande City, Rio Grande city we had some issues with codes, for example, because let's say people would build in flood areas without taking into consideration, is there proper drainage, is there not lighting, and so on. So that was the initiative started at that point back in 2000, I want to say 2007, 2008. And of course, it's holding our community to higher standards in reference to developments, which now... Fast forward to today, uh, definitely your standards is something that we need to always keep in mind as far as codes, uh, going back to drainage, proper drainage, proper lighting, making sure that any new development has and meets certain standards above and beyond. And that's one of the things we're going to continue to do. But going back, and I digress, by the way, so please keep me in touch. If not, I'm going to go in different directions. But at that point, then... Uh, uh, back in 2015, or a little bit before that, actually, uh, Mayor Villarreal, Ruben Villarreal, resigned, and then there was an opening for that on his entire term. And at that point, I had already been serving for several years as a chairperson for planning, building commission, and uh, building standards and renewal, and then decided to throw the name in the hat at that point. And well, it was a great uh, experience. And it's one of the things about experiencing new things and definitely uh, throwing your name in the hat for a mayorship. Uh, glad we did that. And uh, fast forward to today. Now, here we are, you know, several years later. But uh, it's part of that establishing a legacy, wanting to make a difference in your community. And by then, it's already here in Rio Grande City for you know, going on to 30 years here in Rio Grande City. And it's been a great experience. And certainly, I, uh, in fact, uh, one of the things that I would recommend to anybody wanting to see public office is, first and foremost, visit with your family. Because it's important that your family, they have to be in on board with. I was about with, to ask, yeah, like, to. how did your family feel about it? Well, and they're the first ones that I talk to, right? Mm-hmm. My wife and my, uh, my, my wife and my son. And my son was young. But uh, nonetheless, it takes a toll on family when it comes to politics. And uh, there's the good, the bad, and ugly, and everything. But, uh, I mean, the experience has been phenomenal. But absolutely, you need to have, first and foremost, family, a blessing family, right? Yeah. Because they're going to be impacted by by this, by the service as, as mayor. And uh, at that point, we're on, and to this day, we're still on, on board. And we've done a lot of great things. Yes, yes. The city yeah. has grown quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like, I, and just going back to your family just for a bit, I've seen your son. I used to be a band director 
I was the color guard instructor and I saw him when he was a freshman up to now. And I, I feel like I've seen growth from him too. Like he's embracing it. He volunteers and, and your wife, I see uh, Miss Monique out there too. And just like doing bike riding in the trails and everything with you. It just looks like he's kind of grown into the, grown into it too. It in is. a good way. Yeah. You know, and I'm glad because my wife has always volunteered. In fact, uh, she served in the, as an EDC board director before I a mayor uh, and she's always served the community and that's something that we've instilled in, in our son too is like giving back to our community volunteering uh, and it's great when you have individuals broader community that volunteer their time because that's the only way to be effective as a community to bring even more services more improving the quality of life mm -hmm. when individuals are willing to give back in some way shape or form and especially young kids, you know, so I love to see when we had that Easter function not too long ago, I had quite a bit of yeah. kids. And also for the rain dash, we had oh, some yeah. volunteers there too. And it's wonderful to see. So going back, yes, he has embraced it. And uh, in fact, the trails are wonderful. That's uh -huh. another thing that I, I love. I do love to get out there and, and do the trails. Of course, got to be careful because some of those are challenging. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Turns and, and, uh, and let's say 45 degree angles in some cases, you know, those drops, right? But it's been wonderful. So yes, I'm glad that he's been embracing that and uh, service, you know, service to others. And uh, which goes back to the same concept of feeling that we can do that uh, and allow us the opportunity to, to venture into the mayorship role, which uh, has been exciting, has been exceptional, has been learning experience too. And, uh, I'm glad that we're at this position. Um, what do you see as one of the biggest challenges that faces our city today? Right now, it, it truly has been. And well, how are we working to address it? I'm sorry, I, I was like, let me finish that before. We are growing. We are in a position where we are growing out of our seams, mm -hmm. which is great. But at the same time, we need to make sure we plan for as far as traffic, planning to make sure we have enough of everything, including safety and security, which comes with more coverage as an area, more services. And as it, we all know, especially smaller municipalities, we might not, we don't have the financial resources that larger municipalities might enjoy. So we have to make ends meet, right? And safety and security, having law enforcement, firefighters, uh, or staff, and having to make sure that we have enough to have staff to accommodate for the expanding city and growth and services that come along with it. And but we're at this point, I'm glad that we have wonderful staff mm -hmm. in Rio Grande City that see that vision. They're wanting to grow with with us and wanting to expand and, and give back to our community. Says because providing these services, we're providing. Uh, opportunities uh, for individuals to want to come back, to live, to work, and to force that American dream here in Rio Grande City. And uh, I wholeheartedly believe in that. And slowly we're getting there. And so the challenges, providing enough water for everyone and water yeah. pressure, those those things that, that are part of, of a growing municipality, but we have to make sure that we're planning not just for tomorrow, but for the next 20, 30, 40 years, which uh, when I leave this position is moving on the torch to someone else. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, we all know that uh, it's one of those moments where we serve. And then at some point, there'll be the next generation. So you hope that you leave this a better place for someone else to take on that that torch and, and create even you know, next to the next. Every commission, and I truly believe in this, where you build upon each other. When we build based on what was previously done, mm -hmm. and then the next generation will build on what we've done thus far and take us to the next level. And you hope that that's the case, right? right. And uh, leave everything in place for that, which we are. And I, we are in an excellent position. It's incredible where we're at today compared to, keep this in mind, I'm 1993. Yeah. That's when I mean, you're not that old. So younger, considering, younger than uh, me. I, I was born in 91. But we are in an exceptional position where we're at today compared mm -hmm. to where we were not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's exciting because you see that 
and you hear it from people outside of our area. In fact, uh, yesterday I was at a meeting out in West Loco where we had the mayors from the whole Rio Grande Valley uh, planning for an economic summit. And there's conversations about what's happening in everybody's community and people know what's happening here it, uh, because word spreads, right? And even more so to have this type of, of uh, podcast and that continues to grow that, right? So it's exciting times, exciting times for all of us yeah. and our residents, of course, the community that we serve. Um, what, what do you see um, for the future for Rio Grande City? Wow. It is, uh, well, let's start off, for example, the St. Ives developed, well, you know what? The St. Ives development, that is transformative. And we're still in the first phase. We just started the second phase of it. It's the first phase. You're looking at restaurants, next phase is a retail, and then the uh, light industrial and hotel hospitality there, which there should be construction very soon. Uh, that development, uh, within the next five to six years, it will be fully complete. Uh, the same thing with uh, warehousing and cold storage. We are getting warehousing and cold storage in preparation for this whole concept of nearshoring, meaning that we're gonna the US is gonna slowly start getting away from the China concept where we're depending so much on China, but but uh, we'll be moving more towards Mexico, Canada, and Central America, which means that uh, we're gonna have a lot of traffic through this area, trade and commerce coming through our points of entry. In fact, our small bridge here, two-lane bridge, uh, you're talking about billion, one billion dollars a year in trade that comes to this bridge, over a billion. Now, that's going to go even further, and of course, once we establish the uh, routes here, and of course, the warehousing, cold storage, that's only going to be, which goes back to the traffic and managing traffic through our area too, right? Uh, the medical residency program, in fact... Now, a medical residency program here in Rio Grande City, it's another transformative development. It's going to transform a region for generations to come. Not just Rio Grande City, but La Luya, Suarez, Roma, Mexico, Zapata, they'll be visiting this center because you're looking at 45 acres of medical development, including the research and orthopedics and a portion of a medical residency program in a small rural community in South Texas. I mean, to have something like this, it's one of the few in the nation of of a population this size and uh, in fact the first cohort begins uh july 2024 we're going to have the first cohort of medical residents here in the city in 2024 and it is affiliated with a m m texas a m university so uh it's wonderful again for a community to going back to some of the challenges is having the med serving and uh the needs of the community, particularly in medical. You know, we're going to slowly, we're getting to the point where the majority of our medical needs will be serviced here in the United City or Stark County, not necessarily have to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that medical development is huge. That, uh, and that's one of the things that uh, we still haven't publicized it that much, right. but this is huge for our community, for our county, when you're looking at a medical residency program in a small rural community, and it's one of the few in the nation, typically this you see in larger municipalities with half a million people or a million people, uh, or over 200 and some 50,000 people. So we're in a good place. So, I mean, there's just so much going on, and uh, it's, part, it's, it's great to be part of this. Yeah. Is it's exciting. If I, we all had something to do with it. It's a collective effort of multiple individuals and entities making this happen. But I always believe in that concept that hey, if you go in the same direction, you're going to have that mutual, you know, that common goal, that mutual direction of what's greater good for the community. At the end of the day, you're going to grow in the right direction, in the same direction, and get things done. Right. And then I think, like going back to the medical development, I mean, that's going to help so many people. Like. I have to take my grandmother to McAllen or to Brownsville or my grandfather to the VA in Harlingen or McAllen. And we even have like the VA coming with the van here right. to Rio um, once a week to like service our community here. So that would even help and alleviate those. That is, uh, you hit the nail on the head there because now you have these services 
that can be provided here locally and not have to make a trip elsewhere. Uh, plus having easy access here and having at some point the, uh, the specialized services, mm -hmm. even more specialized as we continue to grow it. And it's happening. It's, it's happening right before our very eyes. And you cannot drive anywhere in Rio Grande City without seeing you grow. Mm -hmm. It's happening, it's right? And, uh, but again, it's an effort of so many people and entities, organizations, and the private and public sectors mm -hmm. coming together for something. And it, it's all connected. And every facet has something to do whether it's the medical community, the educational community, the legal community as well, and, and you go down the list, government, uh, because, uh, for example, the school district, they uh, went out for some bonds and are building as well, the auditorium, the performing arts center, and the same thing with the medical community is expanding, and our business community is growing, and uh, in fact, we're in an excellent place. Uh, when you're considering where we're at today, it's just, it's an amazing time to be living here and then and only for the future, you know, because the idea is that eventually you have more people wanting to come back and have the resources here, have the jobs here too. And that way they can come back and live here and stay here and buy their houses and contribute to the economy and you know, just uh, connecting the dots. Yeah, that's the goal, right? Like this is our home and we yeah. need to make, help it thrive. Make it better and we can. Yeah point is that we have a lot to offer. When you consider what we have to offer here, it's incredible. I mean, you're looking at you know, Stark County is becoming a premier energy paradigm. You're looking at millions of dollars in, uh, in wind and solar power, you're looking at two international bridges, billions of dollars in trade and every conceivable commodity and service, a destination anywhere USA, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you continue with our uh, our uh, safety and security. We have a very safe community. When you're looking at our binational, bicultural, bi bilingual identity that serves as our strength, we have a strong and young workforce. As I was mentioning, our business community keeps expanding. Yeah. Uh, our medical community, same thing. And then our educational, we have South Texas College, we have UTRGV here. And now this medical development oh, yeah. and, and uh, we're looking at, at the cost of living is below the national average here as well. Yeah. Uh, so you add all those factors and then plus have easy access to a ranch if you want to go right. and uh, ranching, let's say, and then at the same time have the historic appeal here, a beautiful historical buildings. Mm -hmm. And then plus the modern amenities as well. So in a sense, you can be out here five minutes, you're at a ranch, and five minutes you're back in town. If you want to visit historical buildings, here they are. If you want more modern amenities, they're going to be there too, and they already are. So in a sense, it's, it's best, best of both worlds. Best of all worlds, really. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, there's so much that we have to offer, and I'm glad that we're in this position, and, and uh, it's exciting. Okay, well... Mayor, you've made our job very yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, like... <laughs> let me add something else. Yes, you know, go ahead. For example, when you're looking at, you mentioned about when I first became mayor, that was back in 2015. And at that time, I actually inherited a negative budget of $389,000. So we were at $389,000 in the hole, in a sense. Mm -hmm. We were insolvent, meaning that, of course, the that uh, it's hard to repay our own debts. And where we're at today is it's an item day when you're considering, and of course at that time having to tighten the belt and having to readjust how monies are spent and so on. Slowly we've been uh, to the point where we're at today, our fiscal responsibilities and kudos to our commission for uh, being strong fiduciaries and, and absolutely need to make sure the finances are and the up and up for purposes of grants and so on, right? Your finances have to be in a good position, and we are. Uh, when you're considering where we were in 2015, not too long ago, to where we're at today, seven, eight years later, now uh, looking at our fund balance, best in the history of Rio Grande City, when you're considering sales tax revenues, best in the history of Rio Grande City, I mean, our assets, 
best in the history of Rio Grande City. So when you're looking at a financial profile today compared to 2015, which is not too long ago, we, I mean, it's, it's an exceptional story of growth and prosperity and making sure that we're all on the same page to, to be in the position we're at today. Uh, even, you know, this year, for example, January, historical high for ta uh, sales tax revenues. This, this January, February of this year, same thing. March of this year, same thing, historical highs. April of this year, historical high. And I anticipate this May being the same thing. Why? Because we're in a position where all the planning is finally came, coming to fruition and paying off. And uh, it's a great story to tell. I mean, keep in mind that, for example, the, the whole paradigm shift of we have to look at things differently. Why not? Why can't we have all these amenities? Why can we not have a, a medical residency program here? Yeah. Then, uh, it's possible. Why not? Well, let's make it happen. How do we make it happen? The same concept with, and I, and I bring up the story with Starbucks because it uh, symbolizes a paradigm shift of how people thought and, and some people, not everyone. The idea that we could not afford to have a Starbucks here, that nobody would come in and buy coffee here in the Orlando City for some reason, or it was too expensive or whatever. The stories were, there's yeah, no way a Starbucks yeah. would make it. Right. I, I've gotten remarks from people that are from here, but they don't live here, and they're surprised that, Wow, Starbucks? you have a Starbucks? You have a Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's kind of like, well, why not? Like, we're, we're a growing community, and, you know, these are things that our community look for. Um, so that way they don't have to drive out, you know, exactly. just for that, you yeah. know? Exactly the point, uh, which first day sales, first week sales, exceptional. We, mm -hmm. I mean... They did better than some markets that have larger populations. Mm -hmm. And to do that here, that only shows the power of, of uh, individuals and the spending power and people wanting to have those things too. So, and, and you go there and there's a line. So, but it only symbolizes, you know, it kind of encapsulates the symbolism behind that. It's, it's much more than just the Starbucks, right? It's the concept that. Why can't we have these good things here, right? Mm -hmm. And people are willing to support them. Same thing with with uh, our marshals, for example. Marshals is doing exceptionally well, and you're having people from Monterrey coming to visit marshals here in Rio Grande City because it avoids them a trip all the way to McAllen, mm -hmm. which of course that idea is to eventually bring that other other retail stores that that will be coming here once. It's official. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm glad so. that you said that too, because I think there's just so much, um, like there's so many misconceptions, like, well, well, we need more things and we need this. And right. Like we're getting there. Like, it's not something that we can just boom. It's all there. It's like a plant. Like you have to plant the seed, put the water in. And I think that's what we're doing. Well, it's strategic, right? And right. The idea that every move is strategic. Have to lay the infrastructure first and foremost. Are we going to have enough water and pressure for all this development? Mm -hmm. So we need to invest, uh, and we have invested millions of dollars in infrastructure in the last few years to support and sustain all these developments, right? Because if you don't have it, then so it's been a work in progress. And then, well, for example, the retail, I mean, the restaurants first. Okay, so you build the restaurants, and now the next phase, which will be the retail. And the hospitality and the light industrial, uh, but it's all as you mentioned. I mean, the strategic is not just a well, no. You know, it takes planning, it takes uh, mm -hmm. time, it takes money, uh, and the right combination of individuals that are willing to invest. Exactly, and that's going back to the public-private partnerships, where you have government entities getting together with the private sector and say, okay, what can we do with this building? You know, work, which is a perfect example of this medical development, mm -hmm. a, a public-private partnership, the same thing with St. Knives. Because the bottom line is one entity can't do it by themselves. I mean, it would be hard for, it'd be hard for us to develop anything simply by, by ourselves. What I mean by that is that we have to pull our resources 
and make things happen, whether it's through grant monies, whether it's through you know, USDA, EDA grants, uh, same thing with partnering up with the schools, for example, and uh, like, you know what, why don't we do this? Which has been the case, uh, same thing with the county, same thing with the hospital, same thing with whether it's the colleges, South Texas College, UTRGV, uh, or the private sector, which in this case is the HR Health here with that new development. And it, but it's all connected and we're in an excellent position and I cannot stress that enough. Where we were not too long ago, 2015, where we're at today, uh, it's been phenomenal. And I can only see that going further. I mean, we're going downhill in, in a sense and we don't have any breaks on, we're just gonna take it. And, and I, you know, just symbolism behind that. Right. Um, but nonetheless, where we're gonna be in the, even four years from today, you're not gonna recognize what I'm the city. And this is just short four years from today. Uh, once that new medical development is up and running and then the completion of St. Ives and then the warehousing and cold storage and I mean, just those three, for example, and then go on with everything else. You know, you're having a, a lot of development and uh, new housing and there's other opportunities that are coming as well that still work. There's always something new. You know, it's like, okay, so we already did that. Okay, what's the next best thing? Okay, what else are we going to work on? And there's several others that once it's solidified, I mean, it's like, so solidified, it's going to be wow. So we are in an excellent position, and uh, I cannot stress that enough. That short four years, you know, that when people come in, they'll be wow, and as they already are, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. even more so, uh, you know, that old concept of we're just getting started mm -hmm. type of thing. And, and you are. heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we are. We're just getting started and we're growing. And these, this, going back to my plant analogy, it's like we're seeing the sprouts. We're seeing our first little flowers come out. And it's just the beginning. Like We have a whole garden to go. Absolutely. And the garden is phenomenal. It's, uh, and uh, the quality of life. And, and you can you touched up on that is how do you make it all work, right? And it's... All of us have something to do with it, all of us. And I'm talking about multiple entities, talking about individuals, volunteers, and, you know, private, public sector. And I stress that because it, to build a community, it takes multiple organizations and people and entities to be where we're at today. And uh, I'm just glad to be part of it. And all of us are part of this, mm -hmm. right? Because moving uh, the city forward of our size, it's it's not as easy as it might seem, <laughs> especially when you're considering what it takes. Because you know, the idea that you know, there are a lot of ideas. Ideas are just, in my view, ideas, yes, they're great and you need to have them. But also, how do you make those ideas come to fruition? How do you make it happen? Where are you going to get the funding? How are you going to connect that and make sure you don't put the city in a position where it's going to jeopardize them going forward? Because you need to have enough because you never know the whole concept of COVID, for example. Fortunately, we were in a good place that we were able to sustain some of the, the hurt that occurred to all municipalities. And we weren't, we were in a, in a position where we could still sustain it, even though, you know, everything that came with it mm -hmm. as far as, uh, inflation as far as the in some cases uh, more expenses based on circumstances as far as the COVID and I'm just glad that history will reflect that our community came through and our community came through uh, as champions when you're looking at our medical community they they uh, we were at the brink of a total system medical collapse yes we were right? that yeah. close mm -hmm. you know it doesn't seem like but we were very close uh, and I'm just glad that we're able to go through and our medical professionals, our community medical community did an exceptional job. And along with community members that were willing to to follow the protocols and procedures. And in the end, we, we got through it and uh, came together. And we even helped our friends from Mexico you know, where we vaccinated yeah. thousands mm -hmm. of people here in, in uh, Mexico. And not even the other mountains. Or coming all the way from a way to get vaccinated. And once we, of course, took care of our, our community, and then at that point we were in a position, a 
generous position to be able to help yeah, our, yeah. our yeah. fellow man as well. And of course, they will forever be grateful of that. And who knows, down the road, we might need their their help too. Exactly. And if we just mm -hmm. we live in a in a community that is interdependent, uh, symbiotic relationships with our friends and, and family connected to it. And same thing with our, our neighbors, like Luis Escobar, Roma, Rio Grande City. Uh, we're all interconnected, and what happens in one community can affect and has the potential to affect others. So. In a sense, I believe in that concept of collaboration with all of our friends and neighbors here in Sark County, but also in Mexico. And our the medical facility will benefit everybody, like including everybody in Escobar, Roma, even Zapata. Absolutely. Zapata, yeah. uh, even Western Hidalgo yeah. end up here. Uh, and part of that, too, is keep in mind that the first cohort, you're looking at eight medical residents. Mm -hmm. These are already doctors, right? Mm -hmm. Coming into your community, and uh, you're looking at six sixty percent of residents will end up locate or relocating to that within the 35, 30 mile radius, which meaning means that hopefully a lot of these doctors will end up staying here too, right? Right. Yeah. Because we need to make sure we grow our own, and and uh, recruitment of doctors is critical. And why? Because you need to have medical professionals in your communities. So that serves of a, a dual function for two. Yes, right. you have this program, you have all these services, but at the same time, you have an opportunity to have some of these doctors uh, stay here in our in our area. And in a sense, it's a form of recruitment. And uh, so, I mean, even if it's one per year that, <laughs> that you're able right. to recruit. Uh, it's, it uh, prolongs it, that idea that we have all these medical services here to and afford it as opposed to having to go elsewhere. And going back to how do you make it attractive to stay in your community too? Well, you need to have the good schools, you need to have access, you need to have quality of life, you need to have amenities there too. So it's all interconnected and we've been able to focus on all facets of our city quality of life, medical, the educational, the, the uh, safety and security. Right. People want to live in safe communities. And we we happen to be in a good position where we have it all in a sense. Right. Uh, yes, there's a lot of work to be done and got to recognize the fact that we have a lot of work to do. And it never ends. It's never going to end, which is good because in a sense, you're always having to pave the streets. You're always going to have to focus on, on traffic and safety and and issues that happen because after all you're gonna have water break oh, lines yeah, and you're gonna just have all maintenance because you know everybody's using all these um or facilities or equipment or or structures or infrastructure and it just needs maintenance because you know we're growing community we're increasing you know members or people passing through and and it, that's just the everyday uh every day to every day that a city has to to manage exactly and how do you make it all work <laughs> which yeah. is where you have wonderful staff to make that happen yeah. day in day out you know uh and having that vision that hey we are servicing others and we're since we're in the business of Serving others, you know, all of us serve somebody else at some right. different capacity. Right. Whether you're a teacher, you know, whether you're yeah. a police officer, whether you're a manager of a business, I mean, you name it, you're servicing others because we're all uh, interdependent on others and so on. Uh, and which is, in a sense, it makes the city grow and it makes the city be a better place to live, to work, and again to live that American dream. And we. We are living in great times and certainly laying the foundation for the next generations to to move the city even further. Who knows where we're going to be in 40 years, you know, 50 years. You know, I won't be here, but nonetheless, <laughs> you know, the next generation, where what are they going to bring to the table and look at Rio Grande City and say, wow, or Stark County as a right. whole and where we were and where we're, where we're going to be at that point. And uh, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. right? Right now, of course, we're working on the airport. So I want to see that airport expand on the road where you see more planes coming in, landing, whether it's you know, private jets or, or uh, even 727s at some point. So we need to expand that. Uh, 
but uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, but it's but at the same time, it's rewarding because you're seeing the fruits of your labor right there in front of you, for everyone to see and everyone to to recognize that it's happening. Uh, which you just have to drive, you know, <laughs> not even a few minutes, and you're seeing it. Right, right. right. You know, you're seeing it right before your very eyes. So. I'm just again glad to be part of this this growth and prosperity, and uh, where we're at today, it's, it's again incredible. And I cannot say that enough. I'm sure I've already repeated myself, but nonetheless, <laughs> because it, it is it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to to live in a wonderful, thriving community. And uh, yes, by the way, like the other, I would like to see more recreational here too. Whether it's, the bike trails, there's having access to the river, uh, whether it's for just fishing. Or, and we are working with Mexico to uh, help with uh, security and safety on the other side as well. Uh, I, of course, the, we were talking about previously on the golf course, potentially here with walking trails and so on. So all that is, is, uh, is a possibility. And uh, it's just a great time opportunities are about and in fact uh one of the things right is that hey, we are growing we're connected mm -hmm. we are expanding we have all these opportunities unlimited opportunities and potential in this area and uh, the idea that all you need is one once you bring in one okay hey you see what's happening okay the next one and uh the next one and then yeah it's yeah. before you know it Snowball is growing. <laughs> it is, and uh, hey, exciting times! Oh, thank awesome. you. You were our first guest. <laughs> yes, thank you for being our first guest. Absolutely. Um, you are more than welcome to come back again. Yeah. Uh, this won't be our our only. No, will not episode. be our last. We'll be reaching out also to the commission and all our directors. administrators and directors. Mm -hmm. And I mean, our city has so much information. Um, an activity that we want everyone to be aware of. Yeah. Uh, all the work that goes into um, into the city, into the municipality, and all the people that that work behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you know, just to let people know that we're here to work for them. So I think that's important because. As we all know, there's some people that don't think we're working for them. <laughs> but we're here, we're here, like, we really, this is our home. Like, this is our home. We want to see it grow. We want to see it thrive. And we're trying. We're going. We're going. You know, no matter what, uh, definitely, there's going to be criticism. And that's okay. Right? Yeah. Criticism is fine. Uh, and in some cases, yes, yeah, there's some truth to it. Okay, so you get that information based on whatever the criticism mm -hmm. is. And sometimes it's, it's not, it's simply to, the easiest thing to do is tear anything down oh, yeah. or tear any person down. Because how do you build that? How do you create it? How do you have constructive mm -hmm. criticism in a sense? Okay, so you know what? Uh, we could do this better. Okay, uh, how are you going to do it? Versus just to tear something down. So you yeah. But, uh, you know, again, that's a dime a dozen. In some cases, others, it's, very few, uh, but nonetheless, the point is that it's good to have criticism by means and I'll accept it uh, because there are some things we can do better. And, and but the good thing is that we're willing to, and we're gonna get there. We know we gotta pay new streets. I mean, because yes, it's gonna happen. I work on water tanks. The only thing is, how do you coordinate it all to make sure that we fit all those needs? But it just not might it might not be on the same year. Right. It's <laughs> Later for it's next a year. Process. It's a it's process, a process because yeah. you simply do not have. I mean, it's like even having your own home. There's times that you cannot do all. all yes. All, I mean, <laughs> in one year, you know, there's you know, this year I'll go ahead and work on the fans. Uh, next year might be a roof. Next year, you yeah. know, and little by little you get there because there's no way you can afford to exactly. an expense like that, especially considering you have all these other expenses as well. But the same thing with the city. So, so planning, planning is critical. You need we need to strategize and plan to where 
this year we are able to focus on this. Next year we're going to be able to spend it more on this. And all at the same time, taking care of the employees too, because you cannot afford to lose employees either, exactly. right? So yes. how do you find a way to make that happen too? And then again, the safety, security, and fire, and police, and, and streets, and lighting, and drainage, uh, and the quality of life, and so on. Uh, and that's part of the process where you have to be a good planner because if not, uh, I mean, it's just not feasible to work on everything at the same time. And the needs are there. Needs, I mean, there are, again, a dime a dozen. There are needs. And we all have needs. How do we start to satisfy certain needs and prioritize which ones benefits the community the most and then you continue with that so anyway it's all in, and like i said i can digress into many things <laughs> we'll be here so, all day <laughs> absolutely no, no. there's just so much it, it's uh there you know, is. in fact when i have a prayer breakfast uh mayor's prayer breakfast and there's times that you know just there's so much that is happening in real the city that i don't of course i can't talk about it all you know? right. <laughs> because there's just Great things that are happening, and uh, it's, I would love to highlight it all. But like you said, we would be here all day. You know? yeah. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, thank I, you so much. Thank you. I think I, it, I think this is great. Like I feel like people will, hopefully, our listeners will get a sense, a little bit more of a sense of how things kind of work in a municipality, and just know that the message they take away from this is that. We're working on it. We're coming. We're going, but it's a process, and just know that we're getting there. We're going to get there. <laughs> Talking about that, uh, when we uh, first uh, St. Ice project, right? Mm-hmm. And the first phase, we were talking about the restaurants, right? Yes. And of course, what are some of the comments? Ah, pura comedera. Yes. <laughs> we like, hey, more we restaurants. Have, yes. The other, you know, it's in phases. You know, first phase is a restaurant. Yes. Next is a retail, you know, just keep and that in mind. we're already seeing the retail. Oh, the marshals yeah. we have already coming in and tractor supply is relocating to a larger facility. Oh, yeah there you more, know more and, centrally located yeah too. so yeah. it's just uh you know we have there's other ones coming in also and and once they're ready to announce that they're going to be here then you know the city will be making that announcement and um again uh mentioned it's just it it's a process and it takes time I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say patience you know yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just it's patience. coming it's going to happen <laughs> yes it is but, but it's, you know, the idea that people are excited to see all these things mm-hmm. and the curiosity of what's coming next, that's great to see too, right? Because mm-hmm. there was a time that, uh, there was a time when people didn't anticipate that something like this could happen. But now that it's there, it's like, you know what? We also need this. Yeah. <laughs> and we also need oh. that. Oh, okay. So. The, the biggest comment that I see, like, anytime we have a brand opening is like, when is Target coming? <laughs> Mayor, can you tell us when Target's coming? Oh. You're like, no, I can't say anything. I don't know. What I can say is we are in conversations with many franchises and individuals. And, and uh, it's one of those where Definitely don't want to get ahead of it because right. there's a lot of negotiations <laughs> that happen as a result, you know, incentives and this and that. And but once it's official, absolutely, uh, we want to announce it. But before that, I, I'm leery about <laughs> oh, mentioning yeah, it. Yeah, you know, of course, case, of no, course. It's like, hey, you said this was gonna happen, it didn't. Well, you know, so I'd much rather just right. keep it. Uh, but yes, there is a, there are a lot more opportunities that are going to be here and, and yes once we're ready we'll definitely make those announcements and yes there's rumors out there are rumors out there and yeah. okay part of it that's that's fine uh, but it's exciting that people now and are anticipating and are, are the curiosity that other things can happen here which was not the case not too long ago right right and it's like oh, i don't know let me could not see or envision that that could actually happen here. But now that it's happening, it's like, hey, you know what? 
bring us a Target or bring us a mall or bring us like, yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's, you know, one step at a time. <laughs> let's Hold your horses. Step at a time, you know, we're, we're going to get there. Let's just go. Uh, but it, again, it, it's wonderful to see that enthusiasm and excitement and the possibilities that are there and that people are now accepting all these possibilities of that. Why not? Right. Which is a change in the paradigm thinking that it is possible. Yeah. It is happening. I'm seeing it with my own eyes, which that old concept, ah, I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. Right. Yeah. right. And I remember several people mentioning that to me. Okay. Well, it's there. Okay. Yeah. So you can see it. it. You're seeing it every single day. You know, another brick is going up, uh, and uh, which. Uh, on both sides, I mean, you're talking about the west side of town, the east side of town, and here centrally located as well, uh, which that's the other thing about historic appeal. And the Main Street, the naming that our Main Street is nationally recognized. Well, six years running, uh, it's, I, I get a lot, I lo lose count on that one. <laughs> but it's again to where we elevate, elevate the standard of excellence. And we are in that position where all our departments are going to move in that direction where we excel at every level. Mm -hmm. And kudos to the ministry, kudos to our EDC I and mean, our, our boards that we have planning and zoning because they're, they're dedicating, again, they're volunteering their time for these efforts. Right. Um, and then working with the department heads and the staff and everyone, uh, it's, it's, it's a, an effort that uh, it's, it's uh, in a sense you're talking about multiple individuals in the process of making great things happen and like i told you i mean i could be here all day long so. <laughs> all right well then we'll go ahead and uh, any other question uh, stopping point? <laughs> no Wait, do you i have mean, any more questions or no i mean i think we've covered a, we have a good um say like foundation of what we but I think that's the right word like we have a we, you know we a have a, a, a great overview of yes. what's uh, been going on for the city so um, thank you for coming by Mayor again you're more than welcome to come back anytime uh, anytime and we can even uh, expand on a particular topic absolutely um, I'd be more than glad to okay. come back and in fact, I'll come back when y'all are doing this live and in color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're, getting there. Getting there. we're currently. And then we'll have music. And yeah. High, you know, like. <laughs> a band on the side. Yeah. Yeah. You name it. Then, okay, yeah. like, let's go. We're currently uh, building the plane as we fly it. So yeah. it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. Well, and, 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 <laughs> and I anticipate, <laughs> I anticipate that happening or to where I can always see, you know, having a nice little lounge chair and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like the late, late show or late right. night show, <laughs> the late night doing show. the whole late night show thing and, hey, why not, right? Yeah. And you know, some video taping, people listening in, uh, hey, yeah. where yeah. you build, you know, whatever we start can the next, you know, next day, how, how do we make it better? And then uh, six months from then or a year from then, mm -hmm. and, and yes, I can see that happening. All having a uh, nice, I hope uh, so. Late night uh, here in Beirut on this city, and they're rah rah rah. It's awesome. <laughs> Mayor, <Real> music <laughs> from your lips, <laughs> yeah, right? Like that's what that's that would be awesome. That's exactly where we're trying to grow. Also, so all right. Well, thank you, and thank you to all our listeners. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned next week for another episode, and we'll keep you posted on any news and updates. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. And on um, Instagram, Instagram, um, our socials, the city of Rio Grande City, and also the Rio Grande City EDC. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. See you next time again on behalf of the great city of Rio Grande City. God bless everyone.